All right, enough fooling around. Let's go inside and make a tutorial. Howdy folks, how are you? I'm coming to you from my hotel room here in Bangkok where I've been for the past couple of days here for business and I'm heading out right from here to IDS and I figured I'll do a little bit more substantial video for you compared to the other one that I did. It was a short one. So today I'm just going to share a video of a case that I recorded right before getting on the road. It's nothing spectacular but it's got some educational components to it that I think could be of some value to you. But uh, uh, this is, uh, and I had a little bit of chance on the plane to edit the video and so I'm going to just kind of talk to you about it. All right, so the tooth that I'm going to talk to you about here is this canine tooth of a patient that came to see me and uh, the tooth had been necrotic, was uh, kind of changed color, was non-responsive and had been really sensitive for a little while and the pain suddenly went away. So from the testing, it was showing that the tooth was necrotic, it wasn't responding to any thermal stimulus and uh, you can see that there is a significantly large piece of either pulp stone or some kind of a calcification or ossification going on in the middle of the pulp and this is something you see oftentimes with chronic inflammation. In this particular case, my assumption is that there was a little bit of recession, so there was probably some chronic irritation going on in the cervical area of this tooth that resulted into this uh, massively large calcification in the middle of the tooth. And these oftentimes completely strangulate the, the pulp and that essentially results into the death of the coral part of the pulp. And it's very difficult to get through these. I've seen a lot of these and there's some apical calcification and constriction that goes on along with these. So I'm just going to show you how these are ultrasonics are helpful in terms of removing them. So let's get started. As usual with a tooth like this, what we want to do is we want to assess what's going on and can see the apical calcification. And we take an image radiographically and we can see this large little calcification in the middle of the tooth and, and the closure of the apical area as well as a little bit of an apical periodontitis as you can see here. And the CBCT shows in the axial section that area in the middle of the tooth is kind of closed down but there might be a tiny little area on the side of it that we can bypass on this distal area. But the problem here is that we have to be careful not to push this little uh, calcification down apically that will cause a problem. After isolation and the axis, initial axis, I'm using my E15, the ultrasonic tip, to now break down this large calcification in the middle of the tooth. And we can see that the inside of the tooth is kind of empty and that's due to the fact that it's gone necrotic. And now at this point, we want to have a secondary isolation with my endosequence flowable dam material. And so this is nicely sealed so that I can proceed to place Triton inside the tooth because remember this thing contains also not only disinfection but also chelation uh, going on at the same time. So after the, doing that I place the, the Triton and then I'm using my E14D without any water to activate it. And you can see that it creates this soaping action and this foaming action that is very significant in terms of breaking things down and not total vac, uh, the blue cannula is now removing the fluid, the Triton. And you can see that really breaks down and, and removes. This is the soft portion of both the pulp stone as well as the necrotic pulp and now a little bit deeper we can see the deeper calcification that is present so again we place some more triton in there and at this point we're going to go ahead and apply our e14d a little bit deeper at lower power at this point when we can see once again the soaping action that really acts as the um, activation of the sodium hypochlorite along with the chelating agents that are in there and the saponification agents so it really loosens things up for us. So I'm using again my total vac to remove the solution and now I'm using the Endosequence 1706 Scout to try to bypass this little calcification on its distal aspect that we could see from the CBCT was the only little uh, aperture and opening that we had. So here I'm being very careful not trying to push it too hard because the opening was very small and I'm using the 06 so that it can actually open up a little bit more the side bypassing area. So that now gives me a chance to use again the E14D right in that little hole that I created so I can break up this calcification in half and then remove it. So the use of ultrasonics as you guys know I'm a huge fan of ultrasonics. I've been using them for the past 30 years from the get-go uh, of constant ultrasonic irrigation which means the use of the flow of water at the same time. And we continue this little cycle as it breaks up and removes the broken stone, which is not very easy to do. I mean, you're just kind of seeing this a little bit on a faster side, but you have to be careful not to be too quick or rush yourself because as soon as that little 
almost cork falls into the canal, then you're going to have a little bit of a problem. And here you can see the use of the total vac with the ultrasonic allows you to do a continuous ultrasonic irrigation with the Triton, or you could just put continuous sodium hypochlorite in there alone. So this idea of irrigation and suction simultaneously with the total vac in its mode one, which is with the short tip, and its activation along with the ultrasonic can really activate and really catalyze this whole process of decalcifying, getting way through. And now you can see that it's actually removed all of that calcification. You could see a little tiny hole there. That's that little hole that was present just in the area beyond the um, calcification at the apical area of, of the tooth. And that's important again to make sure that none of the calcification has fallen into it. So I'm using the Scout, the 1704, to work my way down into this space. And um, again, being very careful to just remove a little bit. Now I'm moving to the 2004, the 31 millimeter endo sequence files. And we can hear the use of endo sync plus connected with the apex locator the 2004 goes all the way down to the end and you can see that this is a very long canal so the 31 millimeter is present and what i like about the conventional endo sequence 28 millimeter long here is the fact that it is austenitic so the cutting efficiency is tremendous so i'm just going to jump around just to show you from the size 20 all the way to a size 45 endo sequence file and you can see that these files are so efficient in cutting if we use the rhythm motion of one, two, three engagements and then wiping the tip, you can slowly through that size 20 path, walk the 45 down through. And this used to be the ESX protocol and the Sequence Express that I had previously um, explained and you know, several years ago with the ESX system. So we went straight from that uh, 2004 to a 45, working it down and the 4504 is seated all the way to the 28 millimeters. And we're just gonna, you can see here that how you can use the system to dry it. And we, we use the total vac to dry and then added a paper point and added some, some air to wick it out, to wick out the solutions. And now I'm using the uh, endo sequence BC high flow, which has a little bit higher radio opacity in order to uh, place a little bit in the coronal two thirds of the root. And I'm using again, the original size 20 uh, file nice clean and disinfected a little bit of hypochlorite and then use it in reverse direction a millimeter short so that coats the canal walls adequately and now this little trick here because the axis opening is fairly small this is a variation of the hydraulic condensation technique. I described this back in 2008 for the post technique, but you can essentially place a little notch uh, about 10 millimeters deep into the uh, um, gutta percha cone and place it down and you press it and now you can almost kind of break it off and press it apically and rotate it so that the handle comes off. The reason for that is that it just makes it a little bit easier for you to be able to use hydraulic condensation to close the rest of them off. And if in this case, because it was fairly oval, I wanted to put an additional cone. Now it gives me enough room to put the additional cone and then use this uh, new hydraulic condensation tip that I've developed, which is not yet launched, but it will soon be. This facilitates hydraulic condensation. So I put again an additional 2506. So two 2506s were put on the side of this main 4504 cone and that allows me to really nicely complete the obturation of this oval canal and you can see again total vac uh, can be used to to suction out the fluid in there and now we're going to go straight with the bc liner to fill up the rest it's important to bleed the uh, syringe and then you always dispense a little bit at the beginning part of the, the mix so that you don't have the poorly mixed part of the two of the material is not expressed directly so you can come back and fill all the way back up into the tooth and I use the uh, Woodson to pull the BC liner towards the margins to create a nice and uh, clean margin or rather pulling it towards there so you can get that and that's it and we cure that and you can see that we have essentially because of the shape we have a fairly oval coronal area and that's filled very conventional and straight streamlined type of a case. It's nothing really fancy or too complicated, but the management of that area of calcification is very important because a lot of times people try to rush through these types of cases and push that calcification deeper into the canal, which will then block it and you're unable to gain patency as we were able to do in this case. I also wanted to showcase the use of both austenitic files and martensitic files. As you saw, I used the little martensitic file, the endo sequence scouts to just get the working length, but then I used the austenitic file to enlarge that file and a final austenitic file of 4504 to get adequate apical clearance and cleaning with one file because of the fact that these austenitic files are much stronger and far better at cutting 
than their Martin Siddick counterparts. So I hope this was helpful to you. This is a very basic kind of a case, but it is very important to pay attention to some of these uh, nuances of the treatment. I also wanted to showcase the, the multiple uses of uh, total vac in this uh, application, especially in this case of having to be able to do um, irrigation with the Triton while having it activated simultaneously with your ultrasonic. Uh, as you know, many people have always talked about the use of ultrasonics uh, with running hypochlorite through the ultrasonic, but that has always been a problem because of the fact that it will clog and corrode the, the lines that would be running uh, the solution. This would be a nice little um, alternative by using the total vac to irrigate while you're using the ultrasonic to activate it. So that's it. Just want to share this with you. Coming to you from my little hotel room here in uh, Bangkok. And I'm actually heading out tonight a little bit later. So I'm done with this. And I'll be at the IDS. And hopefully I'll see you guys at one of the meetings. We can come by and say hi. I always love to say hi to you guys when I see you. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.